What's going on guys and welcome back to The Hungry Road. My name is Eric, if this is your first time tuning in. This is a car channel and a food channel. If you like food, like cars, boom, The Hungry Road, get it? Anyway, so today we are reviewing the 2018 Tesla Model X 75D. There are already 100 videos out there on this car, so I'm not gonna bore you with all the boring details. I'm gonna show you the cool stuff and I'm gonna show you why this is one of the trucks I would buy. If you go back to a few videos ago where I said I'm not a big fan of SUVs, I'd buy only three of them. The Audi RS Q8, Lamborghini Urus, and the Tesla Model X, and I'm gonna show you why. We'll get to these doors later. It's kind of like a teaser for you. But this car has had a controversial design. It's been referred to as a computer mouse or a rolling stone or whatever, but I really, really like it. It's so subtle, it's modest, it's toned down, it's not loud, it's not in your face. It just wants to blend in on the road, but by doing that, it stands out with how simple it is. The car reminds me of an iPhone, to be honest. Like, when Android came out, they had all these widgets and stuff, and the Apple came out, boom, it's an Apple on the back of the phone, and it was just simple, so that's, kind of what this car is about the simplicity and how easy it works to make your life better and easier as i mentioned before this is the 75d the 75 stands for 75 kilowatt hour battery so this car will give you about 210 miles of estimated range i can tell you like maury that's a lie so driving from the strip las vegas strip to here it's about a 10 mile ride we lost 20 miles of range, but I did have the AC going, music on, and I'm big. So it's hauling around a lot of weight. So whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyway, back to what I was saying. There are many renditions, 75D. So the D means dual motor. It means there's a motor up here on the front axle and a motor on the rear axle. That gives the car all wheel drive, putting down 518 horsepower to these 22 inch wheels and 387 foot pounds of torque. We'll demonstrate that torque later because it is fun. So again, there's also a 100 kilowatt hour battery, which will give you even more range. Then there's the P100D. The P stands for performance. So imagine a surge of electricity going to the wheels and now giving you a zero to 60 in like 3.2 seconds. But that's not this car. This one, I don't know what the zero to 60 is, but it feels around like four. What do you think, Caleb? He says yes, and he's uh, he knows the stuff. So as you can see, the car is locked right now, but as I approach it, it will wake up. The lights will flash like this. The mirrors will open. And one cool thing I do like about the car is that it makes a lot of noise. So not like a annoying noise, but people say this car doesn't have a soul because it's electric. There's no exhaust note. For every motor, makes a noise the truck so let's demonstrate it so right here i have the key which is the most fun part of the car it does look like a little tesla here cute isn't it look like a model s or a squished down model x we don't know but press the front button twice all these crazy noises and stuff and up here you have see if we can get in here room for an eric d weaver The front trunk is probably the only part of the car that's not motorized. So you do have to shut the trunk. I didn't record myself getting out of it because that was a disaster. Don't you worry. I didn't scuff the ones. I didn't scuff the ones. So good. Put the trunk down, give it a gentle push. Now it's shut. But if you follow me around the corner over here, now it's time for the cool stuff. So you're like, where are the door handles? How do I get in? Blah, 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 blah. No, they're right here. These little silver strips. So on the front door, you just push in and the door will open all the way by itself. And I'll come over here real quick, Caleb White. Same thing goes for back here. You have to push the rear of the door and you get 
the gull wing. And the trunk back here, there's a little lever underneath. Press it one time, the whole thing. Let's open the whole car up, why not? Let's go around pushing all the buttons. Open everything up. Now it looks exploded. Oh my God, all my doors are open. How do I shut them all? On the key fob, very top. Just click it three times. Everything shuts by itself. But wait, there's more. So if you look at the key fob, you have the two silver strips on either side. You can just click them and open our doors right back up. And the rear of the trunk, two times. The front doors will not open via the key fob, but that's okay, you don't need them to. So the Model X is equipped with soft closed doors. If you don't know what soft closed doors are, that's okay. It just means that if I don't close the door all the way, the car will finish the job by pulling itself closed and sealing it. So inside the Model X now, very, very simple, minimalistic interior, kind of like an iPhone. I'm gonna keep comparing the two because they're both superior devices in this technologically advanced world. Leather wrapped steering wheel, music controls on the left side, volume and skip tracks. Right side is your voice control for anything you wanna search for. This right, uh, brightness adjustment on the right side with the wheel. And we have our menu adjustment for the dash in front of us here. But you're gonna change what you wanna adjust with this wheel, temperature, fan speed, the brightness, calls, contacts, whatever. So we do have the 17 inch screen here. Obviously it's touch screen, very controversial. Oh, it's gonna be distracting. It's not distracting at all. It's actually very comforting to have all your information you're looking for right here, especially the map. It is just such, such a great map. It's beautifully laid out. The screen in front of us here gives you your, spe your speedometer, um, also another map over here on the side, how much juice you have left, this, what's going on with the car, especially when you're driving and you have cars on the side of you. We'll demonstrate that later. But there's no buttons, like not a single button. Obviously we have the hazards on the left side and your glove box on the right side. But again, there are no buttons. I absolutely love that. It's just, I love everything is integrated into the screen. It is just so next generation. So here we are in the rear of the Model X. Very simple. I have a vent, I have a button to open and shut my doors, and I have a USB slot. That's it. What more do you really need in the back of a car if you're riding, because everything's up front. But it's just, again, very simple, very minimalistic. And you want to shut your door, you just press the button here, and it'll shut itself. So this Model X is equipped with the third row seating. That means I can have seven of my friends in here. Well, me and six of my friends. I got that many friends. So on the back left corner of the seat here, there's a button. If you press it, you can slide the row forward and fold it up, get in ever so gracefully, cop a squat, pull the seat back toward you. And I actually have a decent amount of room but I don't think the people in front of me are gonna have a decent amount of room. But who cares about them? You know, third row, we're protected and safe back in the cocoon. Did I mention this car had a perfect safety rating? We'll get to that too. But I have an AC vent, and that's about it back here. I'm left to my own devices, but having that Falcon wing door makes getting in here so easy because it's so open. So because of the third row, the trunk space is abysmal. I won't try to get in here because I definitely won't fit and I want to crease the ones. But anyway, you can get rid of the third row. There are two buttons up on the shoulders here. Grace your finger across it and you'll lose the headrest, push it, and it folds flat. Now you have enough space for an AD Weaver. One thing I do love about the car is how careful it is about hurting itself. As you can see, we are in a parking structure, so there could be some anxiety about the doors going up. But if you watch the door open up, it's careful. See, it stops and extends the lower part out. I think that is just so cool. I think the car has a personality. EV charging has become a lot more general these days. As you can see, there's a Nissan Leaf sitting next to me. There's another Tesla over there. And all these different cars have different charge ports. 
So this guy here is a kind of general one, but as you can see, it is not quite fit into the Tesla Model X. So inside your bag, inside the trunk, you're gonna have an adapter that looks like this. This is the piece that goes into the car. This is the piece that goes, attaches here, boom. And you plug right in and you start charging. Oh my God, the door handle's so far away. You can just step on the brake and the door will shut itself. So here we are inside the Tesla Model X. To put the car in drive, you put your foot on the brake and you pull down the stalk. The car will not move forward until you give it some gas or some juice or some current. So here we are, here we go. And here we are in some nice, empty Nevada roads so you already know what that means so one of the things these cars have over the gasoline powered engines is instant torque so when you just put your foot on the gas it just sucks you right back into the seat something crazy there's 60 that was quick this is only the 75 D they make a P 100 D that gets you to 60 seconds in about 3.2 seconds we're approaching like roller coaster speeds on an everyday driving. The driving experience of the Model X is okay. The ride is decent. It's a 5,185 pound SUV. It's not gonna be very nimble, but boy, when you hit it, <laughs> that's also really good for it. Try throwing it around the corner, you're gonna roll it. You don't wanna do that. But I love this thing. It's a very cool, calm, relaxing driving experience. And it's, I feel safe, you know? I'm monitoring the cars around me at all times, all these cameras that work together to keep you safe from the outside, outside world. They work very well. Steering is okay. It's not super tight or anything, but again, it doesn't matter. It's not a sports car. You're buying this car because you don't ever have to use gas. It's gonna keep you safe. And it's very, very fun, period. So let me show you how this autopilot works. I have a destination on the map here. I'm gonna proceed, give it some juice. And if I tap, there's a stalk right below the turn signals. If I pull it forward twice, it engages autopilot. Now I have my hands off the wheel. I can adjust the speedometer. So we're doing 44 right now in a 45. But if I wanna turn it up, I can do 50 by tapping the stock upwards. You do have to touch the wheel or give it a little bit of a tug in order for the car to remain in autopilot. But my feet are not touching the brake or the gas accelerator. And my hands are now on the wheel. Yes, I'm paying full attention to the road. I'm not reading the book. I'm not in the back seat. I'm hanging out right here in the front. The car is paying attention to everything around. So right here is giving me a warning. Apply slight turning force to steering wheel lets the car know that I'm still in the driver's seat and I'm still in control, sort of. But the car is driving itself. It notice, recognizes the traffic cones on the left side and it's keeping the car in the lines. There's actually really only one set of lines and it's off to the left side over here, but it's doing a fantastic job. So we have a curve approaching here. I'll give it some force so it knows I'm still here. Well, it's not quite a curve, but a turn. And the wheels turn itself. Here's a better turn right here. I have no stop signs, no nothing in front of me. And it's gonna slow down or not. There we go, slow it down a little bit. Turning the wheel. Recognizes the speed limit. Now it's telling me to put my hands on the wheel. So like I said, if you're not an idiot, autopilot definitely use it as you can see guys this is one of my favorite vehicles ever the science is here the technology is here the power is here the torque is here the future this is the future of automobiles electricity driving themselves like this is just a glimpse of what is to come yes autopilot is eh, iffy here and there but if you're an idiot don't use autopilot but how do you know if you're an idiot if you are the idiot don't worry about it just don't use autopilot if you're not comfortable with it i'm comfortable don't worry about it anyway don't do it for yourself i can't quite afford them yet they're still about 60 grand for a high mileage one of these probably like the 60d but I would want 100D, and those like 100 grand. Oh, don't be talking about getting them new. They start at 100 grand, and if you want the P100D, they top out about 130 grand. 
I ain't got the juice. But if I could have my perfect spec, it'd be red with these wheels. Or maybe purple with these wheels. But continuing on, like this car has a soul. It has, it makes noises. It does all kind of crazy things. It just moves gracefully. Like this is, it, no other car does this. And it is just the perfect, I think it's close, as close to perfect as it gets. I did rent this car on Turo. So if the owners are watching, thank you for letting me rent this. If you're interested in selling it for low, you know, give me a call. It's graceful. It's modest. It's simple. It's like a gentleman in a nice tuxedo who just who handles business. Everything is just great. So until next time, guys, remember, like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. Give me some criticism. Let me know what you think about the video or the Tesla Model X or about EVs in general. There are plenty of other EVs on the market now and they're kind of taking over. Remember, there's never an empty tank or an empty stomach on this road. But no tanks here, no empty batteries. Cheers. 68, 22 and a half, 0.6. Yeah. You can hear me, you can see me. I'll try not to squint because the sun is in my eyes, but I think it'd be all right. I'm gonna walk back over here. We pull the seat back to us. There's no room. Actually, there's a lot more room back here than I thought. And I'm actually pretty comfortable. I'm ready to go to sleep. So because of the third row of seating, your trunk space is pretty abysmal. I can't even fit in here. Bro, so up on the shoulders again, on the left side and the right side, I didn't even try to do that. It's like a touchscreen fucking button. Uh.